Well, we begin this morning with a conversation with someone I think a lot of Albertans would like to hear from. Our education minister, Adriana Lagrange, joins us live via Skype this morning. Good morning, uh, Minister Lagrange. How are you? Good morning. I am well. How are you? I'm doing well. A lot of questions to share with you today. We put this out to our breakfast television viewers and they offered us uh, some questions that they'd like to ask as well. Let's start it all off with, we learned earlier this week that kids K-12 to will be back in the classrooms come September. How did you come to that decision? Was it a tough one? Oh, it's always a tough decision. Um, uh, of course, uh, we, we've worked with all our education partners, and including the superintendents, the school boards, the, the teachers association, the parent organization. Um, and key for us was also working with uh, Dr. Dina Hinshaw and her team uh, to determine that we've got our plan. Uh, we came forward with a plan on June 10th. We shared it with all Albertans at that time, and we've been continually working to refine it what I've heard more and more from parents particularly is they wanted certainty. They wanted to know when their students were, when their children were going back to school. And so we have committed to uh, telling them by August 1st, we knew right now that, uh, you know, especially with numbers climbing, that uh, we, we needed to get that certainty out to, to parents now so that they could plan for the future. Uh, with the recent spike in cases, uh, Minister, was this decision a tough one? I know you uh, uh, gave Albertans a timeline, um, but it's tough to say what's going to be, what the picture will look like two months from now. Was there any uh, consideration on holding off on this? There was consideration uh, of taking everything into account. We we know that COVID is here to stay. Uh, we also know that uh, when we went um, back in March to uh, teacher-directed at-home learning, that there were so many unknowns. We didn't have a plan. We didn't know if we could bend the curve. We didn't know if our health system would be overwhelmed. Now we have a much clearer picture of what the future holds for us. Um, uh, Dr. Dina Hinshaw has been uh, extraordinary in, in communicating with us and working with us to develop this plan. So we feel very confident that we have great uh, health guidelines to guide our upcoming school year. What will the classrooms look like come September? Should we expect smaller class sizes? Well, uh, certainly right now in scenario one, uh, we are not changing the sizes of the classes, but we are asking school divisions to look at the, um, the ability to social distance where possible, uh, look at rearranging desks. There's a number of, of measures that can, can put in place. The school year will look very much as it has prior to COVID-19, but with many additional health um, um, guidelines put into place. So, um, you know, of course, students, as they enter the school, there will be hand sanitizing stations. Uh, they will be required to wash their hands on a more regular basis. There will be uh, social distancing where possible. There will be um, uh, ability to monitor the flow of students to and from. Again, uh, we've provided all of these detailed guidelines to school divisions, and now they're working on their plans mm -hmm. to make it a reality for their own local, um, local schools. What if we have parents that are feeling uncomfortable? They don't want to send their children back or perhaps their child has a medical issue, a weak immune system. It's just not feasible for them to be in these class sizes. Will there be a virtual option for those, those people? I, I can certainly understand parents' uh, anxiety and hesitation. I, I'm a mother of seven. I'm a grandmother of four. Two of, two of my grandchildren are school-aged children. Uh, so I, I, I certainly look at things through that lens. Uh, but we have a very, very good, strong plan uh, that will take into consideration um, enhanced uh, cleaning measures. Uh, for those children that have perhaps a health issue, we are asking parents to have a conversation with their, their medical physician and then with the school as to the best way to deal with those, um, those issues within the classroom. Uh, we, again, have provided the broad strokes, a very detailed, large plan um, for school divisions. Now they will take that plan and refine it even further. I've been watching, looking at uh, some of the school plans that are coming out from school divisions. They're excellent, very, very detailed. They are taking every... Um, uh, consideration into um, in, into their planning so that uh, students and staff can be assured that it is as safe as possible to bring our students back in, in September. What is transportation going to look like? Do you still think kids will be taking the bus to school? Yes, transportation will still be available for students. Again, we've provided some um, through uh, Dr. Dina Hinshaw and her health team 
we've worked out some guidelines for school divisions to follow, particularly students being assigned a seat. They will also um, be encouraged to sit only with their siblings. There's a number of other measures as well that will be put in place for this particular piece. Yeah. Uh, again, local school divisions will refine it to make it uh, workable for their own reality. Okay, and lastly, um, I know this can be a tough question to answer, but we've learned that masks likely won't, likely won't be mandated inside uh, the classrooms, but you've got children and teens of all ages in a cluster. Lockers are often very close to each other. These people are going to be on the bus together. Is there not a concern that we can do our best to socially distance these, these children, uh, but at the end of the day, if they start to get sick, if the teachers start to get sick, and they bring that home, what do we do then? Right, so uh, again, we are taking the medical advice of our medical experts. Um, when we developed these guidelines, it was with Dr. Dina Henshaw and the medical ex expertise that she and her staff have. And uh, so we are following that medical advice. If that changes in the, the future, we will absolutely uh, change along with it. Uh, that being said, there are protocols put in place if there is a case of COVID that comes forward or even a suspected case. So we have um, looked forward, uh, forward thinking in terms of ensuring that we have all of those measures put in place to deal with every eventuality. Uh, again, um, there's risk in everything we do, but we have a very, very solid plan that I, I am confident will um, be uh, something that our schools can return to in a safe manner. and uh, and ensure that our, our children able, are able to go back to school and learn. Yeah, that's a tough one. We definitely need to get them back in those uh, learning spaces. Listen, uh, Minister LaGrange, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And I have to say, I had no idea that you are a mother of seven, grandmother of four. Bravo. Well, thank you so much. And uh, I, I, come fe February, I'll actually be a grandmother of seven. So <laughs> the numbers keep increasing. But uh, <laughs> You know what, I, I, again, I want to reassure parents that uh, every decision we make is through the lens of what is the safest for our children and for our staff. It, it really is that uh, that is paramount in my thinking. Okay. Thank you very much and uh, all the best. We look forward to September. Thank you. That is Alberta's Education Minister, Adriana LaGrange, joining us live here on Breakfast Television at 8 minutes past 8. Let's go ahead and get you caught up with your weather. Michelle?